Good evening, Drew. Hey, there he is. Oh, where else would I be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you get up to during the week. Mm. I mean, between band, between band competitions and whatever the hell it is you do. <laughs> Hey, how you feeling? I mean, you you got a busy weekend ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, busy busy weekend at work. I'm gonna go into the office tomorrow afternoon and probably be there for like 24 hours. Yeah, it'll be fun. <sighs> I yeah. remember those and days. Then, and then back on Sunday. Yeah, it's just what it is. It's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's. I mean, yeah. At least at least when I worked there, there were plenty of dry runs. So everybody should sort of know what to expect. Oh yeah, yeah. We feel pretty good. So it's just a matter of uh, doing it and like. You know, like this is a project that we've been working on for three years for like this weekend is the like, hey, we're done. Something's going to go wrong and that's OK. Like you figure it out. You tell that goes. It, you, move, you move past it. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's all good. How, how are you? How are you? Uh, you know, it's been it's been a busy week. Um, I had a chance to catch up with a uh, friend of the show, Matt Tremaine's. Uh, mm, OK. He's doing well. Yeah, he's good. doing well. He's a good, good. guy. He's a, he's an avid listener, so I just thought I'd give him a shot. I was good to connect. Um, he uh, he had reached out to me when I was traveling last week, and you know uh, he's he's uh, temporarily located in Dublin. Um, okay. Won't go into details, about it, but he's, he's he's temporarily <laughs> located in Dublin. So we met up and had a couple drinks and stuff uh, cool. the other night. It's just good to get caught up, you know. And another guy yeah. I used to work with and who's moved mm-hmm. on to to other stuff. Yep. Uh, but he but he's an avid listener, so I just thought that was that was kind of cool to do. Cool. Um, before we get into uh, our homework assignment, and mm-hmm. I see some things that I really am I, I'm I'm quite cross with you uh, okay. on a, on a couple of these okay. uh, links that you put on that, here. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. How are, how are projects at your house right now? I don't have any. Okay, you're not doing anything, <laughs> or nope, nope. And in fact, we can't fact- we 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 can't talk about the litigation right uh no uh we cannot but there has been a little bit of movement that i can fill you in on after the, okay. the show it's uh, been a hot I, minute since we talked about that in, fa- in fact the only thing that i wanted to do i actually outsourced i actually we paid uh true green to seed our lawn so yeah i have nothing going on right now nothing 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 house related okay um, you, have, you have stuff going on though <laughs> i have stuff going on so the first thing i i wanted to have done here Mm-hmm. And the only reason I bring it up is I, I sort of watch the process by which this works. So I had my front walk re-leveled, air quotes. Okay. Um, air quotes, not bad. It's just <laughs> when we moved into our house, uh, one of the things that was noted in our home inspection report, it was like, hey, just so you know, this sidewalk is not graded away from your house. It's graded towards your house. And uh, yeah. And when we get heavy rain, uh, what happens is that rain sort of hits our sidewalk and it really doesn't have anywhere to go because I have these two huge mulch beds sort of build up on either side of the walk as it approaches my front porch. And because that that is level trending more towards my front porch, that turns into a lake. Got it. Okay. With a couple with a couple inches of water. Now, Ooh. thankfully, haven't had any water in the basement or anything because that front porch is a big concrete thing. Uh, but the water, <laughs> the water basically goes under the house and ends up in my sump God, because, yep, because yep. once it, once it sort of hits the, the natural slope of my property, cause it all kind of goes downhill there in the back of the house, it, it sort of just collects back there and everything. So I had a guy, I had a couple of companies come out and I had a quote for like a whole new walkway. That's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, cause I, cause I also need to, I also need to get a new driveway. It turns out. Um, but, uh, there's, there's a company that I had seen do some other work in our neighborhood. It was basically this concrete leveling company and it's really interesting the way that they do it. So basically what they have is they make this slurry, uh, that's sort of like concrete, but not. And what they do is they, they first drill a hole in your, in your sidewalk slabs. Then they sort of shove this hose down there and they use that to sort of pump up the the sidewalk and like the substrate underneath it. Huh. Yeah. So like they That's they neat. they drilled a couple pilot holes in like most of my sidewalk pieces have just one hole in them that of course they patch them. Right. And right. like yeah. a- after a day of the sun beating down on it, like you can barely tell already <laughs> that they huh. were there. Wow. Uh, but they basically shoved this hose down there and re-level it. So like they 
And what they ended up doing is they did something quite clever where, and you see my front walk where there's like multiple, you know, concrete pieces, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They they sort of did it, you know, they, they did the first one a lot, then they did the next one a little bit less and the next one a little bit less. So if you were walking on it, you, you probably really wouldn't notice that it's, you know, changed until you get to the front porch because now the step up is significantly less. Okay. And then, you know, they filled in the dirt and and like put some topsoil on either side of the walkway because now there would have been a two smaller pools of water <laughs> that would have collected <laughs> on either side of the sidewalk. So they basically built that back up with topsoil and, you know, uh, raked my mulch back over it. So it looks it looks really they, they did a phenomenal job. It's just like little touches like that that I like because they could have been like, all right, go get some topsoil deuces. But right. Exactly. But it's, they, it's, it's neat that they could do that without like, you know destroying your front your you know your lawn and digging everything up and replacing it that's pretty yeah cool. no they did they yeah. did a phenomenal job i'm i would huh. happily give them a I, i'm gonna leave them a nice uh google review because they just did a really good job and it's something that i've been wanting to do for like the past year um but with some of the heavier rains that we had this year i was like Man, I, I just really got to get this done and and actually getting them to come out because if I have one complaint, it's that, you know, they have this really nifty website where it's like, you know, type in your shit for a free quote. And I did that like three times and they never called me. So <laughs> I, I just don't know if they know how to get to that mailbox because once I called them, uh, yeah. once that, once I actually, you know, <laughs> called them, they're like, oh yeah, we can be out there next Wednesday. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. Yep. Uh, so they did that. Um, and then like the way, the way the water breaks now, so it'll like sort of roll away from the front porch and then the rest of the sidewalk that's going to break in a few other places. Now, what kind of sucks, and the reason I mentioned I need a new driveway is my driveway has some areas that have sunk down, but they couldn't lift that. Uh, The driveway is too old and pitted that if they try to lift it, it will probably do more damage. So it's it's of a significant age to where, you know, we've only been here a year, so we don't have a lot of responsibility for this, but if it had been sealed, you know, a couple times or something, because right. it's a concrete driveway, then then maybe they could have done it. But he's like, I, he's like, I wouldn't even risk doing it. He goes, you know, just start budgeting for a new driveway because the one you have is going to continue to crack and pit. You maybe get a cu- couple more years out of it, but that's probably going to be our next major expense. And I don't know exactly what it's going to cost to do that at our house right now, but I can tell you that we were looking at building a house. The cost difference between an asphalt driveway and a concrete driveway was significant all caps hmm. so I, I and it's only gotten more expensive because apparently the price of concrete has gone up quite a bit so i'm expecting it to cost significant bucks but it's it's something i'm just gonna have to like bite the bullet and do here soon hmm. yeah um the other thing we're doing mm-hmm. uh is we have decided that our our big investment this year okay. is we are going to do a slight kitchen remodel Okay, so your first of all, your kitchen is beautiful. Thank you. So, what are you changing? So, the the people that lived here before us did a lot of modernization. Uh, mm-hmm. They they did a wonderful job on the bathrooms, uh, especially like the master bath that we have. Like they put mm-hmm. in like a beautiful tile shower and a nice soaker tub and granite countertops, and they obviously put new cabinets in there looks really and and flooring and under heat flooring like they did a great job and then in the upstairs bathroom because the family that lived in this house before us had four kids uh the upstairs bathroom they basically did the same thing except they did not replace the tower it's the tower the shower (laughs) tub uh because you know they have little kids and i'm sure they probably took baths and they were of shower age um We've sort of kicked around the idea of putting in a, just a shower up there, but if we ever to go to sell this house or something to families with kids, it's probably more attractive to have a tub. I don't know. Yeah, I think you need a tub somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's you that's kind of how. Yeah, title. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they need a tub somewhere. Uh, I, I would like to get it replaced, or maybe get one of those bath fitter things or something to put on it. I, mm. I don't know. It's just okay. it's just old, and there's tile in there that's a little old and. It's not crummy. It just doesn't look great. I, but they put new toilets in everywhere. Uh, they obviously did the floors, and you know they 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 did a good job. Um, however, in the kitchen, all they really did in the kitchen was put granite countertops in and an under sink, uh, under mount sink. Um, 
the problem is the the cabinets in there are original and they painted them white and it's it's like you said it's it's fine like it's okay. it's not anything we necessarily have to mess with but in our old house we did something similar um and the cabinets in this house are just a little dinged up they either need repainted which i could probably do but painting cabinets is way different than painting like a wall if you want to do it the right way, you really need like a spray paint gun and you need a nice finish. And, you know, I could pay somebody to do that. It would probably be a couple grand to do that the right way. And then putting new hardware on whatever. Okay. <laughs> so what I really wanted to do is I wanted to have the cabinets refaced. And I'm not sure if you've ever done that before. I have not. No, no. Yeah, but it. But as the name implies, it's it's basically what they do is they come in, and what they do is for all of your drawers and all of your cabinet doors, they basically fabricate new ones, right? So we're going with like a shaker style cabinet door, which is like that. Uh, I I don't know what you have in your kitchen, but it's like you know four pieces of wood that look like a box, and then the the face of it's yeah. recessed a little bit, right? Right. So we're going to, we want those. And then for our drawers, we want like soft closed drawers. So, so basically what they do is they build faces or replace the faces of your drawers and your cabinet doors. We also have a lazy Susan. That's a whole nother can of worms. (laughs) And then on top of that, what they do is while all the doors and the drawers are off, they come in and they basically take other pieces of finished material and they put it over your existing cabinets. So it's it's already mm. pre-painted, it's already finished, you know, with a with a certain type of like finish. And like they they tack that on there with, you know, I think little nails or something. And they basically put all that on there. And then when, you know, they basically put all your doors back on. And it looks like you have brand new cabinets, but essentially what they've done is your existing cabinet, your existing cabinets are already there. And your existing holes for your drawers and your cabinet doors are there, but you're getting essentially new cabinet doors, new drawers. And then what they all, what we're also having done is in some of our cabinets, we're getting pullouts. So, okay. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, yep. you probably have that. Uh, newer homes mostly have that. We actually don't. It's actually one of the things we actually do want to do at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, this, this place we found is phenomenal, but, uh, so we're, we're having that done now. That's. That's money. Like that's a lot of money. Like mm-hmm. for for a kitchen our size with the amount of cabinet doors we have and the the cabinet area that we have, it's significant. I mean, I'm not saying it's like a fortune, but it's a significant chunk of money. However, the one thing that I absolutely positively hate about my kitchen is the sink. So we it's like I said, it's, it's granite countertops with an undermount sink and first of all, the faucet is installed incorrectly uh, because the faucet they chose if they had installed it correctly, you wouldn't be able to turn the faucet on because it would hit the wall. Huh. Yeah. So so they don't have they don't have the they don't have the right faucet there. So it's not installed correctly. And like every time I want hot water, like you have to like operate it opposite. <laughs> and and I've lived here a year and I still don't get it right the first time. Uh and then like the sink is like this dark kind of color that just it just doesn't look good. Like, I don't think it looks good with the countertops because the countertops are a little bit darker. They're almost like they're a very, very dark black with like flecks of brown. And I think like a little bit of green in it, honestly. Hmm. And I love, I love the, I love the color of the countertops. But the problem is if I want a new sink, we have to get on new countertops. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I called around and I talked to a few people and they're like, yes, we could absolutely cut your countertops. We could absolutely cut your, your cabinet to fit a new sink because uh, we really want one of those nice farmhouse sinks, you know, but they're like, it's probably not going to look great. It's very easy to screw up. We might end up chipping it. They're like, if you're 100% serious about doing this and you don't even have to give us the job, just replace your countertops. So basically what I did is I, I found a couple companies. They came out, they did measurements and it was like, I wasn't, it wasn't like a race to the bottom, but I wanted to find the right company to do all this. And I had to go look at different countertops and everything. So our big project that's going to be taking place over the next few months is we're going to have the reface done. Uh, and then we're going to have the countertops taken out. They're going to modify one of our cabinets. We're going to put on a farmhouse sink with a new faucet, new garbage disposal, the works, and then uh, new countertops. 
So it's going to be pretty significant. And honestly, it's kind of like a waiting game right now uh, because they can't do anything until they get the cabinet doors and drawers fabricated. So basically, like, you know, the the guy that's going to be doing the work came out and he spent like four hours in my kitchen on, <laughs> on Tuesday. So he came out and like he had his laser measure and he did everything. And, you know, he walked out. He basically it was like a mobile drafting class because like he sat in my kitchen, like sketched it out and took all the precise measurements with like mechanical pencils. And I'm like, where did you get that mechanical pencil? First of all, because I love the look <laughs> right. of that thing. It, it looks like it's a pencil that he's had for like 20 years. You know what I mean? It looks like an yeah. older style, almost like a late 80s, early 90s mechanical pencil. The pro- the kind we probably had in high school. Uh, it just it just looked really cool. And I was kind of nerding out watching him do all of it, but I had work to do, so I couldn't hang out there. And I'm like, Rocky was checking him out. I was like, <laughs> uh, but he came out and did all that. So now, you know, he's he scurried away and he has to like, you know, they have to like fabricate this and paint them and get them mm-hmm. ready. And then... When that's all done, uh, then they'll come out over the course of like two or three days. And, and we're talking like four to six weeks from now. Like it's probably not going to be done till after Thanksgiving. So okay. huh. there's going to be a lead time there. And then when all that's done, that's when they'll rip up the other countertops, put a temporary sink in. And then once the other countertops are cut and brought out and installed, then they'll do the sink and then we'll be done. It's going to be quite a production. I'm excited for it. Um, again, of all the things that I could do to my house right now, kitchen wasn't at the top, but I'm in a position where we can get it done. And I think it's one of the more expensive things we want to do to the house. So I'm pretty excited for it. Um, if anybody yeah. listening to this lives in Ohio and they need a good reco, um, of all the companies I talked to, the one that we ended up going with was just super nice. It's a small family owned business. Um, they've been doing it for decades longer than that maybe yes please yeah uh yeah i'll i'll send you the recommendation they they have they're just very thorough they're very nice um they use ipads and i don't know if that's i don't know if it's a plus for most of our listeners but it is for me it's better than the alternative so (laughs) it's true (laughs) anyway that's that's what i have going on so enough about all my stuff let's um let's dive into our homework yes so last show we talked about watching Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Yes, yes, the anime series on Netflix. Did you do yes. your homework? I did my homework. Okay, good. Good. So did I. Okay. Who wants to go first? You, you go first. Ah. Uh, do we need? Well, first of all, do we need spoilers? I don't. I'm gonna say we don't, and here's why. Okay. When I first found out about this show, it was because they talked about the final scene. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Uh, it, yeah, you know what? There's going to be spoilers. Screw it. I don't care. If you don't like okay. it, use chapter skip. You can skip along. Just in case we accidentally say something. I'll put in the put in the warning. If you don't want to hear spoilers, skip skip the chapter. Hey, nerds, there's going to be spoilers. Uh, I, th- I think I alluded to this last, uh, ep- last ep- uh, episode. Everything I disliked about it was the overly anime stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I do not like the anime style of a close-up on someone's face and they open their mouth a little bit and go, ah, or ooh, or, <laughs> or ah. I, I don't like that at all. It bothers me. Uh, uh, also, was not a big fan of uh, what Rebecca, the whole like lowly thing, lolly, whatever it is. That's that that shit just freaks me out. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh as far as telling a you know cyberpunk story, it was really good. <laughs> uh, I I loved the action. Uh, I I loved the the overarching storyline. One of the big overarching kind of stories in cyberpunk in the tabletop RPG, and I even think like in the video game is cyber psychosis. Uh, I think this gave a very interesting look into that. Uh, because that was one of the main storylines really was, you know, someone dealing with uh, the the mental tolls of excessive cyberware. Right. Uh, but, you know, it, like I said, everything I did, everything I disliked about it was, you know, the anime stuff. Like, it's so, it was so cool. Like, in the first episode and they get a phone call and it's the same sound as a video game. And then they just keep pulling that shit in the whole time. Like, mwah, like... Yeah, it really felt like this was. What did I? Where did I? 
was it on the besties podcast where someone said no i can't remember what podcast it was on uh i heard this before not my not my thought was uh you know media based on video games goes one of two ways most of it is they're trying to bring new people into the franchise, right? Like they're trying to get people who have never played the video game to play the video game. The other way is this is a love letter for people who already enjoy the game. And that was definitely cyberpunk edge runners. Like it was, Hey, you know that video game? <laughs> this is for you. What did you think, Drew? Did you like it? So I, I did. I did, but I, I have I have a couple things that I don't like about it, and I think I'm going to start with that. So, okay. uh, I like anime. I like watching anime of all different kinds, and different anime artists, different anime series have different styles. I felt this, and I and I didn't look this up. I meant to do this before the show, but I don't know what studio animated this, but it feels like a very very good by Western standards animation. Okay. I don't think it holds a candle to any modern anime series. Um, the the character art styles, I wasn't a huge fan of. Uh, I don't think the action sequences were... I think some of them were good. Most of them I did not like watching. Um, Studi- I, Studio Trigger. There you go. Okay. I don't, I've never heard of them. But I had a hard time liking the main character, David. I thought hmm. he was... I, I, I didn't like him. I thought the whole, like... You know, uh, lonely, lonely kid finds cyberware becomes hero trope is the I don't know. Say what you want about that. But once I was like five or six episodes deep, I really, really liked every other character in the show. Okay. I loved I loved Maine and his whole gang. Like I've, I, yeah. I got I that's when I got pulled into the world when he started running with that crew. That's when I got pulled into it. And watching what sort of happens to the crew over the next few episodes uh the the like the last episode where like where main goes crazy right yeah um mm-hmm. like i thought i i think that might have been my favorite episode okay just because i just i thought that that's when the storytelling was at its best and you know not i i thought the rest of the episodes were good right watching david sort of take over and and be like a leader and stuff like that and Um, go down the exact same path main did yeah essentially yes (laughs) yeah essentially yes Mm -hmm. um and again i knew it was coming because like i don't know even even though i was sort of going out of my way to watch spoilers like knowing who dies at the end and how things end kind of achievement it a little bit for me i think had i hadn't known that i probably would have like been pretty pissed about the ending but knowing I, that going in it's pretty telegraphed well except maybe yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> well put it this way the yeah. the person who died isn't the person i thought it was gonna die okay i thought they were gonna kill off lucy oh uh, I, uh, it's okay major spoilers time but it was the is the first or second episode when he meets Lucy and and they do the brain dance for her, like and he learns that she wants to go to the moon. As it's soon as they it, third. as soon as they did that, I went. David's gonna die, and the last scene is gonna be Lucy on the moon. <laughs> well, and I, I called thought, it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I thought, I thought mm-hmm. that again. If I didn't know the, the opposite, ending, yeah. <laughs> if I didn't know the ending, I was gonna be like, Dave. David's gonna fall in love with Lucy, and. He, you know, my thought would have been she's going to die after he's already experienced death. And and that's, you know, that's what I thought was going to happen. But instead, what happens, Paul, mm-hmm. what happens? Uh, David saves her. <laughs> David saves her. <laughs> and dies. <laughs> yep. But someone else dies, too. Like, uh, almost out of nowhere, right? Uh, well, like, Re- Rebecca also dies. And, and Kiwi dies. And, uh... Pretty much everybody but Lucy, really. And uh, Falco. Falco does not die. Oh, that's right. Falco yeah. does not die. Falco does not die. Because you can actually get a text from Falco in Cyberpunk 2077. Yep. <laughs> which, which, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. Shows based on video games can go a lot of different, or go one yep. or two directions, I should say. The the tie into the video game world was very strong. And I oh, felt very that. very strong, yes. And 
a lot of the a lot of the terms for like the cyberware and the other mm -hmm. terms of the world yeah i thought they did an okay job of kind like leaving it up to you to sort of like deduce it but the fact that i had played the cyberpunk game yeah i felt like i had a huge jump start so it's like one of those yeah. shows where like somebody would ask me like hey is cyberpunk edge, Run edge runners worth running and i would like hesitate and say well did you play the game and if they answered no i don't think i'd recommend it i don't think i would either <laughs> yeah I don't yeah. think I would either because there's just so much like camp in there mm -hmm. that panders to the game. Like you said, the telephone calls and like the injectables and like just little and, touches. And, right. And, and the fact that like you can go back into the game and like find a lot of the key locations yeah. in the game. Yeah. 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 But, you know, all in all, it was enjoyable. I thought it was just the right length. Um, I don't know if they're going to do a series you know, season two or not. Probably uh. not. I don't, I don't, I doubt they would, but I mean, unless they want to introduce new characters, maybe they do a whole new series with a different plot line. Yeah. I don't, it, 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 I, don't I think if they did, it would be a totally new set of characters, right? Like, uh, has not been renewed for a second season. There you go. Okay. Uh, which I don't think it needs to, it, it's a standalone story. It's what, like 10 episodes, 22 minutes each, like. It's not very long. Uh, yeah, it was, 20, it was perfect. Under 30. It was perfectly yeah. bite sized. Like yeah. I binged like three or four episodes a night. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's good. I mean, like you know, it is hyper violent. Uh, very violent. <laughs> very violent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it was good, and it got me back into playing Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. And <laughs> and it's interesting, right? Because yeah. that also got me back into Cyberpunk playing. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I have not touched the game since release i i don't want to say i suffered through it but i tolerated it at release in the state that it was in it, on same same of all of all the <laughs> platforms you know the pc was tolerable i guess mm -hmm. um and you know say what you want about the story um yeah some of it got a little repetitive but i really mm -hmm. like the world i really like I, yeah. I like all the missions except the main story honestly the, so, the whole mm -hmm. well, the whole first the whole first act <laughs> of the game was great yeah. Like up until the point where like, you know, you meet Johnny Silverhand. Like I loved the first part of the game. Loved it. Yeah. And like the side missions were fun. Um, wasn't a huge fan of like the rest of the story, but but yeah, anyway, I, I'm I'm back into it. Yeah, me too. And I'm playing it differently. Like I basically I I know how long like okay, the main story is not very long. Uh so I kind of just like sprinted through that. And then uh I've been doing everything that's not like doing that last final mission, <laughs> like just doing all the side quests, doing gigs, just, you know, buying cars I don't need. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to the radio. Uh, yep. Yeah. So what what's interesting for me this time is the game has been out long enough now that uh, CD Projekt Red has enabled modding support on the PC version. Okay. And when I fired it back up the other day, I went through and you know, found out what mods were kind of used mm -hmm. or what were the more popular mods. And first of all, there's a ton of mods out there uh, to that you can make your character look like Lucy. Oh, uh, I, you can you okay. can get her outfit, yeah. you know, like some people were very, very talented. Um, there's there's a ton of really good gameplay, uh, gameplay tweaks that like changes the car handling and mm -hmm. changes the way okay. you equip weapons and um, you can, you know, there's higher, te higher resolution texture packs you can download, which there's already super high resolution in that game, but like higher, pol higher polygon counts for the characters and like, you know, new guns and all sorts of stuff. Right. Um, the, the one thing that I love that they did is like in a game like Skyrim, if you mod it and you want a new set of armor, you, you download some files, you put them in a certain directory and, you know, you can, you know, find the vendor that sells them or there might be a location that they spawn in the world that you can just go and pick them up in this game. What they did is, you know how like there's the in-game web browser. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of the clothing mods in this game require another mod that basically adds another website where you like can buy the, the clothes that you download. Oh, okay. It's very clever. It, I mean, it was a kind of a pain in the ass to set up, uh, even with a mod manager. Um, but the, and there's there's also some really good combat uh, combat tweaks that like make combat a little bit different, um, mm. especially if you're melee. Anyway, I, I, I maybe I'll put together the list of mods that I'm using. 
Um, but it, it makes it like way better, you know? And like, if you, if you want certain clothes from the game, like Lucy's outfit, you know, for the standard vanilla V, like you can do that, you know, there's other things in there that make it so like, if there's a, if there's a really nice piece of like clothing that you like that has shit stats, you can like make it good by taking it to a vendor to upgrade it to like legendary. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. There, there. I can't even tell you which which ones I have on here right now. Let me see. So just look through here real quick. Um, I mean, there's just Lucy after Lucy after Lucy. Oh, I'd I, imagine, yeah. Um, yeah. some Rebecca ones for, like for her guns. Well, um, her shotgun's actually in the game. Yeah. Um, here's a mod that makes Pan Am's ass bigger. Might need that one. Uh, of course, that's yeah. that seems like the internet right there. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. I there. There, there's a lot first of all there's a lot of that okay there, there's there's a I, I, lot of oh, uh, i can you, imagine yeah if you of, want your character thirsty, to have bigger boobs a lot there's of thirsty dudes playing that yeah, game there's yep. a lot of yep. a lot of thirsty people first of all <laughs> um oh. different tattoo options i don't know there's there's just a lot and it's kind of cool that you can do that to this game now because you absolutely couldn't do that before uh, oh ghost in the shell stuff hmm. they put in here anyway it's just that i think i think that's a cool touch and that's that also got me sort of back into the game too cool all right, uh, t- I'm 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 about to get mad. So okay, let's... why why are you gonna get mad? Why did you buy this? <laughs> I bought a diff- I bought a new keyboard. Uh, you you everybody, sure did. Everybody did. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a total in, it was an absolute impulse buy. A hundred percent, just hundred percent impulse buy. Uh, uh, Keychron, the company that I bought my last couple key car- keyboards for. Uh, they just started selling. I think they actually was on Kickstarter, but I think they're finally selling it like on their website proper. Uh, they started selling a keyboard called the Keychron Q10, and it is a Alice style layout, which is a uh ten keyless split keyboard. Uh, big big Microsoft Comfort keyboard vibes, by the way. Oh, oh well, yeah, yeah. Uh. I saw this and I'm like, I'm clicking through and I'm like, ooh, that navy blue does look really freaking good. Ooh, and they and they have the brown switches in stock. Eh, what the hell? Bye. Uh, <laughs> not knowing if I would like it or not, but just like mostly like, ooh, that looks fancy. Uh, I'm here to say, I, I don't think I'm ever going back. This keyboard is fan fucking tastic okay it's wonderful it is wonderful i am absolutely hooked okay and is it just because it gives your hands a more natural way to rest or yeah so i'm fine so a couple of things one uh i i i love how it looks uh it comes with like a matching usb c cable cable which i actually haven't put in yet because i have to like get get back and like unhook things so that's nice uh it's made out of aluminum it just looks really good. It like weighs like five and a half pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's very, very heavy. It's very sturdy. Uh, I like the angle that the keys are in. Uh, I find it r- extremely comfortable. Not not that I was having problems before, but it's just like, ooh, you know, it's like, you know, it's like sitting in a nice luxury car. It's like, ooh, this, this is, this is different. Uh, I also have come to love the keyboard features along the left hand side. Two things. One, a knob. I'm a sucker for a keyboard with a knob on it. Good knob. Good knob. It's, it's a good knob. And it has five macro keys. And I have started to use them. And Okay. Stop. Stop. Mm-hmm. Stop. Stop. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. dying to know what macros you have. Okay. Okay. So it's actually, uh, it, it's a very, very, very simple. Uh, there's, an, there's five macro buttons. I currently have six macros assigned to them. And they're actually extremely simple macros, but there's things I use all the time, and it's great. M1, M2, and M3 jump between my three virtual desktops and spaces. Okay. All right. Okay. I, okay. I can fuck with that. Okay. 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 All right. M4 is screenshot. Okay. 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 Uh, and M5 is paste without formatting. So it's command. God, and yes. Shift v. God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> God, yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what world governments got together and changed the way we copy paste, but yeah. yes. Okay. 
Also, if I do function M1, it locks my Mac. Function F1. Oh, uh, function M1. Function M1. I'm oh, sorry. Function, function M1. Function one right? But that's only saving you one key. Because you're right. Yeah. Apple yeah, Apple yeah. shift what Q? I think it's a lot. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 command control. Command control. Control Q. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I, you know I, what? I I I. Most of I, these are only saving me one key. I but, was yeah. I was yeah. unzipping my fly <laughs> till you got to that six macro. Okay. I, 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 I was okay. fully okay. erect till okay. you got the macro six. Okay. Well, you don't have to use that one, but yeah, did, yeah. I, I and I use all of them. I, the screenshot's the one I probably use the least, but the switching between and pasting without format, man, I use that all the freaking time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just nice to be able to smack that thing and it just, poof. except I'm looking at you, Office, that doesn't respect it. Mm. <laughs> all right. So riddle me this, Batman. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at pictures of this thing, and here's what I can't tell. Mm -hmm. Typically, when you see keyboard layouts like this, right, the reason I said it has big Microsoft ergonomic keyboard, because I work with people that that's all they'll ever use for the rest of their life. And yeah. it looks like this, except it sort of has the hump in the middle. Yeah. How is this contour? Does it curve in? Is it? I mean, it looks yeah. like the elevation changes from the front to the back of the keyboard. It goes up slightly to the back, but otherwise it's flat. Okay, so it, it doesn't have like a natural hump, so it, your no. wrists still lay flat then. Yes, yeah, so it's basically just kind of allowing your wrists to not, you know, to be at a more natural angle on top of the keys, right? It, it doesn't mm -hmm. have like a weird thing where like it rises up in the middle yeah. like a lot of those do. It's, 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 it's a flat keyboard with, you know, a slight rise towards the back, uh, but just the, the keys are kind of just smushed and moved around a little bit. Yeah, well, yep. what was interesting here is like from from the from the angled pictures, I, it almost looked like that sort of caves in towards the middle. So almost like a like an invert, like almost like a bowl in the middle. It looks like if it does, it is extremely subtle. Okay, I have, I'm looking at it right now from like all angles, which by the way is very hard because it is really freaking heavy. Uh <laughs> Man, look at that thing. It looks pretty flat. Okay. It looks pretty flat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And you got it. And you got it with the brown switches. I got. That's what I like. I. I mean, if you like more clicky, then go with the the reds or blues. But oh, brown's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I brown's got the fine. browns. Uh, they do. I think these these browns feel better than the browns I bought on my previous K8 Pro because these ones are. I believe they're lubricated. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, I mean, there's so much marketing on this thing, like a double gasket design and, you know, this is, stuff, this is, but... this definitely looks like it's a, it's a pricey little guy. Yeah. 215, I mean, which is a little high for a key cron. It, it is. It's very high for a key cron. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I have my key cron and I, I love it. You had, mm -hmm. you've now had a couple key crons and you love them. Uh, this is my fourth one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you've had a few. And you went with what's the difference between navy blue A and navy blue B? Uh, I think the uh so navy blue A, the like modify the the macro keys and the it's basically inverted. Oh Light, yeah. lighter oh, keys, lighter keys, darker other stuff where the A is Darker keys, lighter, other stuff. Both are okay. good, but I don't think. Yeah, that's what it was. Navy A didn't have the the Browns in stock. Navy B did. So you went uh, with Navy B. Navy B. Yep. Okay. It's it's it's. it's I think beautiful. I think that yeah. I think that's yeah. the correct choice. Yeah, uh, I I I love it. Like again, I bought it just absolute whim. I had no idea. I wasn't looking for an ergonomic keyboard. I didn't know if I would like it. Uh, in fact, like the first day that I used it, I actually had more wrist pain. Because I started using the modifier keys and I was using them by like turning my wrist and like reaching out my hands. Yeah, yeah. So I, ha I had to learn that I actually have to slide my fingers over to do it. And once I've done that, it's been much better. But yeah, I was uh, going to say, it's probably mm -hmm. going to change up most of your like typing now, workflow here. Now, there is no end key. I know that Ooh. was a big deal for you before. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I did go into what's the software you have to use like via key via I did make function and or no function home to be end as well. Okay. Uh, so I, that, that was my, uh, cause I also use the home and end keys quite a bit. Yep. Uh, yep. I actually may 
one of the things I might do is that there's an insert key up there by F12. I never use it, so I may I may make that end. <laughs> I think that's what I attempted to do on that other keyboard, and I could never get it to work right. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Yeah, it's interesting the way they put insert instead of delete there. Yeah. I never I never use insert. I don't either. Ever. Never. Not if if I do, it's an accident. Like And I get and I get mm, I get mm, hella annoyed. Uh, like how, how did I even do this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I, okay. I actually I actually maybe if, if those are the same colors, I actually maybe I'll take one of my the end key from my other no, keyboard and no, put it on use, there. You, you <laughs> use something like totally outrageous. Like get one of those like keys with like a, like a sculpted like aquarium on top of it or some shit yeah. like <laughs> yeah like mushroom cloud or something <sighs> oh that's cool mm. oh. man i don't know man i don't think i had a, a microsoft natural whatever mm -hmm. back in the day and I'm not gonna say i didn't like it i did but i don't think i i don't know man like it was yeah. like you said it was so total impulse buy like mm -hmm. And like for these kind of keyboards, you you kind of know how you kind of have to know how to touch type. Yeah, because like because everything is everything is moved, and you kind of just need to rely on where you're knowing where your fingers are. Which you know, like I'm pretty. I mean, I'm not the fastest typer in the world, but I don't have to look at my keyboard to type. Like <laughs> right, same. So, yeah, yeah, very very the same. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so you're digging it then? Are you gonna buy another one for home? Or for uh, work? Uh, well, my home is my work, so that's true. That's true. That's yeah, true. <laughs> I I never go in the office, and I actually I have, uh, I have one of Keychron's like slim, which one is it? I I have one of their low profile like thin. I oh, is it the K one? I don't know. It's one of them. I don't know what it is. Uh, no, it's actually the K. It's the K two. I have the K two, uh, which is a low profile, very compact keyboard that I actually throw in my laptop bag. So when I do go into the office, well, that's what I was gonna I, say. Like, yeah. which keyboard are you gonna take in? Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna take. I mean, I don't want to. Literally, I can't imagine carrying this keyboard from my car into the office. It is that heavy. <laughs> it's, wow. It's it's comically heavy. Like, I didn't realize how heavy it was, and like the the, the wonderful D A D H L man. You know the the third string of U S delivery services. <laughs> right. Uh, dropped it off right. on my uh, dropped it off on my uh. God, my, you know, I was really hoping for that sponsorship, but <laughs> fuck it. I mean, I I picked up I picked up the box and I was like, oh no, <laughs> what did I do? Like, is there two in here? Like, no, it can't be. It's not that thick enough. Like, you can just it's yeah yeah, <laughs> very very heavy. Yeah, I work I work with a guy when we travel to Seattle for <clears throat> team meetings and stuff. He has one of these little guys. I think he also <clears throat> has a K two that he throws in his bag. Yeah, he like he likes to do that. Because there's, I mean, what and, and the hoteling offices there, like the the keyboards have long been picked over. So like you can show up with your own <laughs> keyboard and mouse, and yeah. there's monitors attached to the to the workstations. But well, I mean, I'm happy for you, but I'm mm -hmm. not. I just, I don't know, man. I, 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 mean, I say, I, I don't think anybody has to go out and buy this keyboard. Like it, it was like. Well, but to see, that's that's what struck me so odd here, right? Because you said you weren't looking for an ergonomic keyboard. Mm -mm. I wasn't looking for a keyboard. The, the yeah, keychron keyboard sent me period. keyboard keychron sent me an email and i clicked i like that uh, looks cool and i clicked on a link they yeah. saw you coming yeah. they yeah, saw it was you coming 100 keychron sent me an email and I, and I clicked on it i was like i really like that blue i wonder what that's like <laughs> and then and then i'd already ordered it so yeah. <laughs> your credit your, you, you came to and your credit card was on your desk yeah <laughs> i've been there uh, uh my pants were down and my credit card was out i don't know yeah Okay. Ugh. All right. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're enjoying mm -hmm. that. Now, mm -hmm. this next one, though. Okay. I, why are you mad at me about this one? I don't know. Just get a room. <laughs> Just get a room with this guy. Uh, so <laughs> my big my big fancy British coffee boy, uh, James Hoffman. Uh, this is actually his second book, but uh, he just released a book called How to Make the Best Coffee at Home. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon for twenty dollars. Actually, no, you can't buy it on Amazon right now because it is temporarily sold out. Boom! Take that, haters. Uh, as somebody who, uh, you know, coffee was my COVID project. I'm really into making, you know, 
fussy cups of coffee and uh i'm really into like trying different beans and investigating ways to improve my brews and and things like that uh this book is absolutely fantastic uh how many pages is this uh 224 I think. god damn water grounds filter how hard could this be <laughs> well you see drew i wish i had the book my book the book's actually outside because I, I i was reading it uh it, it the starts book, the book is outside <laughs> well no it's it's well not in my office it's it's in the living room okay so, so I, I, it, you keep your because, books outside because i was i was reading it uh it's it's got it's got cha- it's got a chapter it's got a whole chapter on water drew a whole chapter including including uh a water recipe <laughs> i hate i hate that this exists i i hate that this exists i swear uh, to god first of all i'm i'm making a rule we're coming up on the time of the year where we're going to talk about christmas you are absolutely forbidden for buying this for me like this, you, you cannot get this for me okay, okay. i hate this a recipe for water mm-hmm. yeah yeah go on well, it's all so. I mean, you want you don't want hard water, but like you also don't want distilled water, right? You want a little bit of minerals in there, and a, you want a little and, bit of funk, and a, and a little, and, a little, and a, a, like, and a little bit of like alkaline in it as well, like just just a little. And like it talks about, it's got like okay, so if you go out and buy a water testing kit, it's got a chart, and basically you can map things to figure out. Uh, Oh, you so know, if if you're if you're kind of in the sweet spot, and the chart also has like all the, water the joy, of, all the joy of owning a pool, except mm-hmm. not owning a pool. You're testing uh, your water, but then it has like like hey, so like your water is really hard, and you don't have a solution to it. It has it has in, uh, ingredients for basically starting with distilled water and adding minerals and and alkaline to it, and it's got a recipe for that uh, to kind of guide you guide you through that. So. Uh, yeah, but you know, it talks about grinders and gears, and then it has, uh, you know, the it covers like just the basics of extraction and what's under and uh, under and over extracted, and what's it taste like. It teaches you how to like, you know, gives you some tips on how to taste coffee and how to compare right, cups I'm looking and, and do things, and then it covers a whole bunch of different ways to make coffee. It's in the final chapter is all about espresso. Which is something that I hope I don't get into because woo, just flush money down the drain, baby. Okay. Uh. I'm reading the table of contents. Mm-hmm. Yes. One, how mm-hmm. to buy great coffee. Yes. Mm-hmm. Two, the essentials for great coffee. Mm-hmm. Feel like that car, you probably could have rolled that into chapter one. Three, nope. how mm-hmm. to taste coffee mm-hmm. with your mouth. Four, mm-hmm. how to brew great coffee. Yep. We've been over this. Mm-hmm. Now, iced coffee and cold brew, I'm not going to pretend I know how to make those, except maybe add ice to it or there, put it in a fridge. There's a chapter on that because there's two different ways to make it. There's brewing hot coffee and putting it over ice, and now, then there's brewing coffee with cold water. Yeah. Now, I, I, well, I always brew my, well, I always start with cold water. But <laughs> the last chapter here, how mm-hmm. to make great espresso, mm-hmm. I will concede that that is probably the the bo- that is probably the boss level of of coffee. It, it, it is it's telling. Actually, he covers that in like the very beginning of the chapter. It's like people say, "Should I buy an espresso machine?" And my answer is, "Well, do you want a new hobby?" And then and then he also tells them that you know, this guy, you know, he owns a coffee brewery. Like he does not have an espresso machine at home. <laughs> yeah. So that just tells you, like, it, it gets. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny because I was actually looking at home espresso machines the other day, and that's mm-hmm. you're easily into the, the 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 four figure range for a good one. Oh yeah, and not even considering the fact you're probably going to have to buy a three or four hundred dollar grinder mm-hmm. to really grind it, find enough to or uh, find. Well, I have find, that. I have uh, that. Mandy, mm, Mandy bought me that nice Brevel. It's probably not as nice as the one I, you have. I don't think the Brevel is going to be good enough for good espresso. <laughs> my name's Paul, and I have the best friend. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, Strong it's, coffee. Mm-hmm. Strong coffee. The best way to store coffee for daily use is mm-hmm. something dark, dry, and airtight, like mm-hmm. my soul. Okay, many yep. bad. Okay, I'm just kind of peeking through here. <laughs> I like the pictures. The pictures are very it's, pretty. It's full color. The paper is good quality. It's nicely bound. It's got many pictures of my beautiful British boy in it. 
Uh, yeah, the the picture of the picture of him uh, sipping mm-hmm. next to the window. He's got mm-hmm. like huge like Jeff mm-hmm. Goldblum energy. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, I, I, I absolute man crush on this man. Absolute man crush. You think? Uh huh. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ashamed. Uh, but it's it's good. Like it's it really. Granted, like I did learn some stuff. A lot of this is pulled directly from his YouTube videos, but it's nice to have it in one condensed book. It's it's you know it's nice to be able to quickly go, you know. So you know, what grind level does he recommend for a Chemex? Oh, a little coarser than I'm used to. Okay, and then you and then he explains why he recommends the grinds to be a little coarser, and you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like yeah, the filter is a uh, the filter is thicker, so like. You need to be able. The water needs to be able to flow through it, and if it's too fine, it clumps up. Like, okay, yeah, I get it. So, so here's the here's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. I, I I own a Chemex. I got mm-hmm. really good at well, by my standards, <laughs> good at properly knowing the right amount of grounds mm-hmm. and the right temperature to use the Chemex. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a French press, and mm-hmm. I got good at learning how to use the French press, and I have an Aero press. Mm-hmm. Here's here's the thing. Let's say I I did read these chapters Mm -hmm. do you do you honestly think right i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to be mean but do you honestly think that i would be able to taste the difference in how i brew the coffee if i followed this to the letter absolutely absolutely that's a bold statement absolutely that's Uh, a bold statement uh it, uh, it does depend on the type of beans that you get uh well of course but but uh I, I, even, I, I, need, even, I need a constant variable though. Like with the even same... with the, even with the beans you whatever beans you have now, if you followed this, I bet you would get a less bitter, more sweet cup of coffee. God damn. Okay. Uh and then and and, and it's you know uh uh I was gonna say something and my brain just absolutely like sank faulted and and my tongue nice. fell out of my head. You just blue screened uh, yourself. I, I blue screened myself. Uh, yeah, and uh, and you know, it, it, it's not hard to make a decent cup of coffee, right? It's not hard. It's also not hard to make a good cup of coffee. You just have to do things a little bit differently. Like you really have to. Uh, like, he he even says it right in in the book, like. If he wants to recommend that you spend money and get one good thing, he recommends it to be the grinder because that's going to, that's going to make such a huge difference in your cup of coffee. uh, If to have, you know, being able to grind finer and be able to have grounds that are a consistent size, you don't want different size grounds in there. Uh, Also, you don't want one that retains a lot of, you know, coffee in it. Uh, so, you know, and by, by doing that and, you know, following some basic tips, so basically like one of his things is like, uh, brew hotter, grind finer than you, you've been doing. Uh, <clears throat> cause you, you want to get, you know, more of those, you know, s- sweet flavors, but then also like, you know, what a cup of coffee that's under extracted tastes like. What's a cup of coffee that's over extracted? What What are those flavors? What are you looking for there? And and then how to change and and dial in so you can actually get the best. You know, like if I get a new set of beans, like usually my first cup of coffee is kind of mediocre, but you know, but my big, big beautiful British boy, he's taught me what to do. So I'm like, hmm, I think this next one I actually need to like grind a little finer or drop the temperature a little bit. Uh, so like my, my second or third cup, uh, I've, I've got it pretty nailed in and I'm making really good cups of coffee. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- that's the last question I have since you're such a fan and you watch mm-hmm. his YouTube videos. Like mm-hmm. what is this book teaching you that, you that he hasn't already taught you? Uh, th- I've learned a few things like he, uh, he hasn't really talked about water on the, th- on the stuff. Uh, uh, it, but it's nice to be able to go through and like, Okay, I know he has an AeroPress recipe on the internet, mm-hmm. uh, but I also can go to the book and go, oh, there's this AeroPress recipe, and it's got pictures, and it's got times, and it's got charts, and, and he goes into a little bit more uh, like explanation and detail in the book that he really doesn't cover in his YouTube channel. Uh, so it's you know if you're a fan of James Hoffman, it's it's a great resource. Like it's it's every it's all of his knowledge and recommendations 
distilled down into one book. It's not overly complicated. It's, uh, you know, it's not super sciencey. It's just basically like, hey, like I made a lot of coffee and this is what I think is the best way to do it. And here you go. <sighs> I mean, I'm intrigued. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued. I mean, and yeah, it's it's all about, you know, buying good coffee and weighing, weighing everything, weigh everything, weigh it. Wait, hold on. I gotta, wait, I gotta wait, check wait, something. Wait. Just okay. real, real, real quick. I, I gotta, I get okay. it. I gotta, I gotta fucking. God, I, I fucking hope this is a thing. Okay. <laughs> hold on. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't tell you what I'm doing. Okay. I can't tell you what I'm doing. Is this not a thing? Okay. <laughs> never mind. I, I just had a wonderful idea for your Christmas present. Oh, okay. And okay. It turns out that what I, what I want apparently does not exist. Okay. Mm. But I'm not giving up on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry, not to be vague, but I okay. just, I okay. just had, I just had a wonderfully devious idea. Uh, anyway. And if, okay. If, if you, if somehow could get one of those like weird, like neck beard anime body pillows. <laughs> No, I was right, on it. You, I, I, I I went to Cameo to see if I could get in oh, you. Oh, yeah, he's no, he's not he's not on there. Yeah. God, I wish he was. I would yeah. I would I was yeah. gonna, I was going to have him call you right now. <laughs> <sighs> that would have been funny. Yeah. I, I wish he would be. I, I would love I would love a personalized message for my big beautiful British. I would just have a read boy. the dictionary to you. <laughs> I I would listen to it. Mm. To put you to sleep. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Uh, okay. Anything else about that? Nope. All right. Uh, one last thing I want to share with you. This, this okay. came across my YouTube recommender this week. Okay. Paul, how familiar are you with the concept of speed running a video game? Not very. And it's not something I'm super in. Like, I, I appreciate that people have figured this shit out, but meh. Eh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so mm-hmm. I'm glad you said that because that's typically how I felt about mm-hmm. it. Like, I don't. I genuinely like when I see like, you know, average games done quick or anything like that. While I appreciate the hustle and what they're doing for charity, um, for people who don't know, average game done quick is a um, an annual or maybe semi annual at this point charity event where people play a video game as fast as they possibly can on screen. And when I say video games, I'm talking about like NES, SNES, Genesis, you know, Wii sometimes. Mm-hmm. Even even some like newer PC games, just to see how fast they could possibly finish the game, and there's a certain amount of skill in that. Um, the reason that I'm bringing this up though is there is a YouTube channel that I found, and it is is this guy. His name is Summoning Salt, and what he has done on his channel is he has put together basically the history of speedrunning certain games. Hmm. So, like, just to give you a for instance, one of my favorite games of all time that I had growing up was Mega Man 2. Okay. Love that game. Still love that game. I I never beat Mega Man 1. I honestly don't remember beating any other Mega Mans. But Mega Man 2, I used to play the shit out of that game. And there is a new video that he just put up recently. And it has an interesting title because it has a clip of somebody saying the F word. And, like, oh. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube went crazy on that for some reason. <laughs> Huh. There, that's a whole different story but it's somebody who broke a world record and just kept saying the f word because they were so excited as one does <laughs> anyway he has this documentary about the history of like how people speed run mega man 2 and it starts with like the first legitimate like somebody played the perfect game and they did it in 30 minutes and then they started figuring out like different ways to break the game uh and then they started playing the the japanese version because it's harder but the cutscenes play faster like it goes pretty deep, <laughs> and the way that he sort of explains it and introduces the people who did it, I found it oddly fascinating. Because like I, I'm like you, I don't normally give a shit about this, but this is like the first time I actually got into this where it's like, that's pretty damn interesting. And then the other one, if I was going to recommend videos on this channel to watch, the one where they talk about Punch-Out!, like okay. Mike Tyson's punch out. The history so, of super punch out world records? No, that's super punch out. Okay. Um, there's a different one. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah. Uh, nope, that's not it. That's not it. Um, it's named uh, not the world record progression. Where is it? Where is it? The history oh, of blindfolded punch out. <laughs> that I haven't watched that one yet. 
I have wow. not watched that one yet. The one on Metroid was also very good. Shoot. Uh, History of Mike Tyson Punch Out okay. uh, Speed Run. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the name of the video is The Quest to Beat Matt Turk. And this video is okay. very interesting because apparently one guy. So in order to properly speed run Mike Tyson's punch out, the goal is to beat to see how fast you can possibly beat each fighter. Okay. And the way that they did this is there was a separate world record for each fighter. And this one guy, Matt Turk, basically had every single record for every single fighter for like 15 years hmm. and people started to like really grind after it and find out like down to the frame how accurate you had to be and he, and like the way that this guy does the video like again normally i wouldn't even give a shit but the way that he describes like how they went about breaking down his records because like here's a perfect example like the first fighter glass joe you and i can tie the world record for that but it's a solved oh. fight to where like He's predictable. There's no randomness. Like you hit the keys in this order at you this particular this time. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you beat him like in nine seconds or whatever. Like everybody can do that. So the best you can do is tie that record. But there were some people who looked at some of his other records and were like, Hey, on the first piston Honda fight, like what if we did this instead? Right. And they figured out how to like trick the AI into blocking in the wrong place. And hmm. I, I don't know, man, I don't really want to go super nerding out on it on you, but I would recommend that one. I would recommend right. the Mega Man 2 one. And then there's this other one that talks about the first Super Mario Brothers and how like the difference between um, what is called a tool assisted run where you basically program an emulator to hit the keys like at an exact certain frame in the game huh. versus what humans are actually capable of and how like these people played the game so much they were actually able to do what the emulator did. I found that, again, super fascinating. So if you're looking for something to where like, hey, maybe you're laying in bed or you're laying on the couch and you want to watch something interesting that's very well explained and very well documented, I kind of fell in love with this channel. I gave him a subscription. I just thought it was interesting. So I'd be interested to see if you watch one of these, what you think. Okay. Yeah, I, I added a couple of them to my uh, watch later queue. So I will yeah. watch them later. And it's interesting, right? Because these are games that, you know, I grew up playing and I never had like any inkling to try to play them fast. Hmm. But like, oh, the cast, oh, the Castlevania one. Holy shit. The Castlevania one. Hmm. Because what he, like, the Castlevania one's a good example of where like the same three people were like the best in the world and they keep trading off like the world record by like a fraction of a second. And, and like how they figured out the fastest way to play Castlevania, which is not an easy game. There's also one for Ninja Gaiden in there. Like, I'm sure it's I, one of those things that, like, once you achieve it, you've basically told everybody else what you've done because they can watch the recording and and figure it out and then emulate yeah. it. So it's this is probably is custom one um, one upsmanship where people are, you know. Well, that's what makes you know. the Castlevania one interesting, right? Like, if somebody gets the world record and they know there's time to give, they immediately play it again because they want to. They want to. They want to be the person to beat their time, not somebody got, else. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I found that pretty interesting. So just want to give him a shout out on the show. I thought it's a really cool, cool YouTube channel. So let me know what you think. All right, we'll do. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, we're on the internet doing their best.com. Uh, uh, and Twitter doing best pod unless Elon buys it. I'm on Twitter at Paul Baylor. Uh, where are you at, Drew? <laughs> I'm on Twitter for the time being at Pittsburgh. <laughs> P-A-T-T-F-U-R-G. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening.